During the first uh, week of this course, we built a suite of 15 elementary logic gates. And in the next week of the course, we're going to take this basic functionality and use it in order to build some more interesting and powerful chips like um, adders and arithmetic logic uh, unit. Now, um, whenever we teach this course, uh, every week of instruction, there's a whole set of issues and questions that come up about different aspects of building hardware and software systems. So we've decided to uh, devote uh, the last unit of each week to answer such questions. And we are calling this uh, unit, uh, this last unit every week, uh, a perspective unit. So here are the questions that uh, typically come up at the end of uh, uh, this uh, unit in which we deal with uh, elementary logic gates. So the first question of the day is, um, is it possible to build a computer starting with a logic gate other than NAND? Well, uh, I'll take this question. And uh, the answer is indeed yes, it's possible. For example, you can use uh, another elementary gate called NOR, which stands for not OR, and base your entire computer uh, on this uh, atomic building block. Likewise, it is quite natural to start with a suite consisting of uh, AND, OR, and NOT gates and use them to build the system. Uh, and there are a number of other possibilities. And uh, in fact, it's quite similar to the way uh, geometry can be founded on different sets of axioms. And each one of them can be uh, yet another point of departure to build you know, all the power and theorems of geometry. This is not such a bad analogy. However, it turns out that uh, NAND gates are very popular in physical implementations uh, of hardware systems because there are many integrated uh, uh, circuit technologies in which it is quite cheap or relatively cheap to build NAND gates. As you well know, uh, during the course, uh, during the first week, we treated these NAND gates as black box abstractions. So the next question, which is directly related to the first one, is, uh, well, if you actually had to build uh, a NAND gate, how would you go about it? Noam, maybe you can answer this question. Okay, so in this course, uh, we sort of made a point of not going into this question because we feel that is already physics or electronics rather than computer science. Mm. But still, let us see an example. There are, of course, many different technologies to implement uh, NAND gates and any other gate, but let me show you, uh, let me show you the simplest example, if you wish, of such an implementation. So here is an NMOS implementation of a NAND gate. We have a plus uh, voltage, which is going to be 1, our logical 1, and a minus voltage, which is our logical 0. And we're going to connect them as follows. A little resistor here, which is a weak connection. And then two nice transistors, NMOS transistors, which we connect this way. This is going to be our A input, and this is going to be our B input. And this is going to be our output. So these are the two transistors that we have. So how does this uh, implementation work? The basic functionality of one of these NMOS transistors is that whenever the input gate has, gets high voltage, then it connects the two other terminals. If it gets a negative voltage inside, it disconnects the two terminals. So let's see what happens. If both A and B are 1, then we get a high voltage here, a high voltage here. These two terminals are connected by this transistor. These two terminals are connected by this transistor. So we get a connection all the way from the output to negative. And since this is a weak connection and this is a strong connection, our output is going to be negative or 0, as we want in an AND gate, because when an AND gets 1 and 1 as inputs, it gets 0 as output. In any other case, one of these two inputs is going to be negative, which means a low voltage. The transistor connected to the low vo vo voltage input is going to disconnect the two terminals, in which case there is not going to be a connection from the minus sign to the output. And so this weak connection to the plus is the one that's going to rule. And we're going to get a plus output, which is exactly what we want in an AND gate, which is true. So this is a not NMOS implementation of an AND gate. There are many other technologies. This one is not used so much anymore since the 70s or 80s. And the important thing in this course is we do not care about the technologies. We do not care neither about this implementation or any other implementation. We want to abstract it away, 
away inside of gates that get true and false and output true and false, and we don't care how exactly. So welcome back from the world of uh, resistors and uh, transistors. And uh, once again, this is a level of detail that we are not going to get into in this course. So uh, here's the next question that we have, um, and it's about hardware description languages. And the question is, uh, how does the HDL that we used in this uh, course and in this week, how does it compare to real HDL languages that hardware engineers normally use? Well, um, first of all, our HDL is a very real language because you can use it to design uh, computers and uh, simulate computers, and that's what HDLs are all about. At the same time, uh, obviously, industrial strength uh, HDL languages like uh, Verilog and uh, VHDL are far more complex and uh, powerful than our HDL. Uh, typically, they have uh, a, a syntax which is some mix of the HDL that we used and uh, something that looks like the C programming language. And they feature all sorts of uh, high-level uh, programming constructs like for and while, which eliminate the need to write a lot of repetitive uh, HDL code. So it's very nice to use uh, uh, these capabilities. And they also feature, uh, like our language does, they feature the ability to model and simulate the notion of time and clocks without which you wouldn't be able to build uh, sequential logic. Uh, you know, logic that uh, uh, ends up, uh, um, uh, with, it, with which you end up building things like memories and uh, encounters and so on. So these languages are very nice, and at the same time, they are quite complicated, and would, it would take you at least a month or so uh, to master uh, the, uh, uh, these languages in order to begin uh, writing some code for this course. So as an alternative, Norm and I decide to, decided to design a very simple uh, dialect or a very simple version of HDL, and, uh, and offer it to you. It uh, has all the capabilities that we need in order to build uh, uh, the computer that we build in this course, and you can learn it in one hour. The next question, which, uh, which is for Noam, is uh, as follows. Uh, the chips that we built so far were quite simple. How does one go about designing complex chips containing hundreds of parts and connections? Well, the truth is <clears throat> that there is no simple general way of designing complex circuits. It's really a complicated design challenge, and you need human ingenuity to do it well. Now, there are many techniques that you learn in, uh, in digital, cir digital circuit construction courses. For example, there are techniques called Carnot maps that allow you to optimize uh, gates with a small number of inputs. Sometimes you can use various tools. For example, there are so-called silicon compilers where you specify what the functionality that you want, and the silicon compiler already has inside it a lot of logic and a lot of algorithms that can optimize gates for you. But again, this is, it is not perfect algorithms. These are all heuristics because the general problem, the so-called NP-complete, you cannot find a computer program that does it perfectly. Uh, the real answer is that after all these tools and all these techniques and so on, at the end of the day, you use the usual tools of computer science, modularity, and abstraction. You break a complex problem into simpler parts, and the simpler parts are simpler to optimize and to construct. And at the end of the day, after you use all your tools, after you use all your techniques, you go back and use this modularity of the idea. So these were the questions that we chose to focus on in this uh, first uh, perspective uh, unit uh, of uh, week one. Um, as you can see, this uh, particular format of uh, the perspective unit is uh, open-ended. There are numerous questions that uh, uh, can come up. Uh, once again, we don't want to deal with the level of transistors and resistors. You know, this is uh, something that belongs to electrical engineering. Uh, we want to focus on computer science. And when it comes to hardware technologies and so on, there are many questions that Norm and I uh, uh, cannot answer uh, either. So. Um, we, are, uh, we welcome uh, any questions that can come up. You can post these questions on the course uh, Q&A uh, forum. And if there are other students uh, who, are, uh, who have some knowledge about uh, these areas, you are perfectly uh, welcome to go to the Q&A forum of the uh, website of this course and answer these questions on your own.